MTC. Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 01. Dear Parent, It has always been our concern to promote quality health of the students in our school and to control and manage communicable diseases. Head lice have been discovered in your child's classroom. Although head lice do not transmit diseases, they are, nevertheless, a bother and can cause intense itching and discomfort. This condition is nothing to be embarrassed about. Anyone, regardless of personal hygiene, can contract head lice. Please check your child's head closely for head lice or the small white nits that look like dandruff, they do not brush off easily. Dot. It takes a special, fine-toothed comb to remove nits. If you should find head lice on your child, please seek treatment and notify the school immediately. Your cooperation will help us keep this situation under control. Sincerely, Mrs. Hunter. Hunter. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 02. I took a deep breath and threw myself into the giant cone. Like a child, I spun and spun inside the cone. For the first time in a long time, I laughed and giggled. This was fun. When I stopped spinning, I held my breath and prepared for the plunge into the pool. A scream of excitement erupted from my throat when I dropped and hit the water. When the cold water hit me, I moved my arms in striding motion to stay afloat as I had seen the kids do. Then suddenly I remembered I couldn't swim. Within minutes, I was neck deep in water. Desperately I flapped my arms in a useless attempt to stay afloat, but the more I flapped, the deeper I sank. A fear as cold as ice froze my heart when I realized that there was no foothold. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 03. One of the best pieces of advice I got when my son was really little was from his nursery school teacher, who told parents to pretend that we liked bugs and worms. The reason? My son's class was doing an earth science unit, and she had found that almost all kids love to dig and play with the dirt. That is, until, at pick-up time, their parents scream, Ew, worms are gross. Which often squashes their interest in biology. Kids get many of their early ideas and prejudices from us. So how you feel about your own work, and how you talk about it in front of your kid, affects how she views work in general. If you enjoy your job, say so. Even if you don't love your job, you can probably say that you love having one. It's important to relay the idea that a job is something to take pride in. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 04. Though there may be no perfect design, we can still speak of good design. We can admire the brilliant solution, appreciate the ingenious device, and enjoy the clever gadget. Imperfect as they may be, they represent the triumph of the human mind over the world of things, and the achievements of accomplished designers uplift the spirit of us all. The pole vaulter who sets a new record is no less of a champion because he does not clear the next bar height. He had conceived and executed his run, the planting of his pole, and the arc of his body in the best way that he could for that meet, and for the time being, at least, his best is the best. We applaud what he did achieve, with the expectation that someday he or some other athlete may design a better pole or vaulting technique and so set a new record. That is the nature of design. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 05. Instant and early conclusions, solutions, suggestions, and statements about how we solved that in the past are the enemies of good problem solving. The good is, most often, the enemy of the better. Defining the problem and taking action occur almost simultaneously for most people. The mentally agile survivor paradoxically puts more energy into playing with the problem mentally, defining more creatively. 
Voluminous research on problem solving shows conclusively that the more effort one puts into the front end of the problem solving process, the easier it is to come up with a good solution. This doesn't mean being inactive. It means being highly cognitively active in defining the problem more rigorously. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 06. Many of the technological innovations with the most profound impact on human society originated in settlements along trade routes, where a rich mix of different cultures ignited new ideas. For example, the printing press, which helped spread knowledge to all social classes, was invented by the German Johannes Gutenberg around 1440. 1440 Johannes Gutenberg This invention relied on several innovations from China, including paper and ink. Paper traveled along trade routes from China to Baghdad, where technology was developed for its mass production. This technology then migrated to Europe as did water-based ink from China, which was modified by Gutenberg to become oil-based ink. Gutenberg We have the cross-fertilization of diverse cultures to thank for the printing press, and the same can be said for other important inventions. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 07 when you watch a movie first on a large screen in the theater and then on a small video screen, do you see giants on the large screen and Lilliputians on the small screen? Of course not. As with color constancy, which makes us see colors as uniform despite variations, our perception is guided by size constancy, which means we perceive people and their environments as normal sized regardless of whether they appear in a long shot or a close up on a large movie screen or a small video screen or whether we are relatively close to or far away from the screen. So long as we know by experience how large or small an object should be, we perceive it as its normal size regardless of screen size, relative image size, or perceived object distance. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Light, 2022, P24 Test No. 08 Charles Sanders Pierce pronounced Peirce, the founder of pragmatism, America's only unique philosophy, was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Charles Sanders Peirce His father, Benjamin, was the leading mathematician of the day, and he took a special interest in his son's intellectual development. Benjamin Under his direction Charles was reading college-level material, including logic, at age 12, and Benjamin would challenge the boy with highly complex problems that Charles would solve on his own. Charles won too, Benjamin Charles. Although his most significant education came from his father, Charles went on to attend Harvard University, where he received a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry in 1863. Charles, 1863. Yet, he was not a successful student, he usually placed in the lower quarter of his class, partly because he showed scorn for his professors as inadequately qualified to teach him. This arrogance is likely the main reason Pierce lived a difficult life. Piercy He died in poverty at age 74 in the then isolated town of Milford, Pennsylvania. 74. MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC Light 2022, P24 Test No. 12 If 100 people are interviewed about, say, whether they like a particular brand of peanut butter and it is found that 38 do, we are told that 38% of people like that brand. 10038, 38% Of course this does not mean that everyone in the world was asked but the researcher assumes that if 38% of the sample liked that brand then it is likely to reflect the opinion of people generally. 38% However, crucial to this assumption is the size of the sample. If you asked just two people if they liked that brand of peanut butter and one did, that would be weak evidence that 50% of people liked it. 50% You couldn't assume that the views of two people would match the whole population. 
generally the larger the sample the more reliable the survey is likely to be. If the study doesn't say how many people were involved, be suspicious. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Light, 2022, P24 Test Number 13 Take a close look at a computer chip sometime. You'll notice that it resembles a dense city in miniature, perhaps symbolizing our move toward an ever more compact and interactive world. In the same way that microchips are increasing in power by providing more communication pathways, we are seeing the power of direct people-to-people -people communication, and the collapse of traditional bureaucratic hierarchies. This frees us to communicate in far more, and more profound, ways. For example, a century ago, few people traveled outside their own county. Today, some kids have more friends around the world that they've met via the Internet than they do in their local neighborhoods and schools. That's because they have grown up with technologies of interactive communication we never imagined. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Light, 2022 P24 Test Number 14 Research from New York University and Tel Aviv University has shown that you are more inclined to think creatively when you imagine yourself removed from a problem or situation. New York Tel Aviv Imagining yourself in the mind of somebody else, for example, is a simple way to trick your brain into seeing things in new ways. The act of people watching is one way to do just that. As you watch strangers, you can imagine how they might handle a situation. That thought process allows for ideas that would otherwise be unrealistic or limited by your personal way of thinking. After all, you might not act a certain way, but a stranger could. Imagining how a stranger might act makes it possible for you to think of more radical and imaginative ideas than you might be used to, simply because it's not you acting them out, but someone else you're watching. MTC Good job! Let's start. MTC Light, 2022, P24 Test Number 15 For Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, STEM, Classes, Empathy has a natural place. STEM It is an integral part of teaching design thinking, which centers on applying creativity to realize and solve problems. In order to imagine or identify challenges to be addressed, Students have to put themselves into the lives and circumstances of others. They have to ask themselves, what is this person feeling? What is his situation like, and how can we make it better for him? They use their insights from those reflections to address solution-based thinking. Through various processes, brainstorming, inquiry, etc., they identify a specific way they can solve the problem. They design and test their prototype still thinking about the ultimate user and making modifications with the user in mind. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Light, 2022, P24 Test Number 16 Low productivity firms are often located in industries where the demand is stagnant or falling. This is partly due to the fact that new plants do not need to be built to meet new demands, but it is also due to a human problem. Dying industries simply cannot be managed as efficiently as growing industries. Growing industries attract bright aggressive managers who want to advance rapidly with their companies. In dying industries promotions are few and far between. Smart young managers know that they should be avoided. Who wants a job where the basic problem is to decide who to fire each day and where new, exciting investments are not happening? In a dying industry everyone is out to protect what they have rather than to build something better. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC Light, 2022, P24 Test Number 17 There is an important reason to attract pollinators that has little to do with their pollination services and a lot to do with the fact that they are part of a food chain. In the natural world everything eats something else in order to survive. Those same insects that pollinate our flowers can also prey on a range of pest insects and help keep them under control. They are in turn prey for birds, frogs, or lizards. The honey eaters, for example, 
that pollinate our flowers while feeding on the nectar within them, also eat insects from under the bark of trees and might themselves become prey for larger birds. Lizards in the mulch eat a range of garden pests and might end up being eaten by magpies. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 test number 18. In an ideal world all arguments would be decided on their merits and not their presentation. But we aren't in an ideal world. There's no getting away from the fact that presentation of an argument is crucial. Advertising is all based on persuading you to buy a product that you would not otherwise buy, and most advertising is the triumph of spin over substance. Many people have won arguments, based on bad grounds, because they've made their points well. And many people with good points have lost their argument because they failed to make their case attractively. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light. 2022, P24 test number 19. To illustrate both the advantages and disadvantages of an even partly iconographic writing, the Chinese script provides a good example. There is the large number of signs. 3,000 to 4,000 characters for everyday use, 50,000 for scholars studying the classical texts, as compared to the Latin alphabet which now uses some 26 signs. 26, 3, 4, 5. Why then has the Chinese script been so successful, lasting, apart from comparatively few minor remodelings, well over 4,000 years? 4. Simply because as a concept script Chinese does not depend on the spoken language. This made it, throughout Chinese history, an ideal means of communication in an empire whose people spoke a large number of different dialects yet were all ruled by the same center. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 test number 20. There has been a lot of interest in the idea of emotional intelligence. Many people are not in touch with their emotions and feel incapable of expressing their feelings. The results everywhere are obvious and catastrophic. In part, this is the legacy of the academic illusion. Conventional education separates intelligence from feeling, and concentrates only on particular aspects of the first. This is why being highly educated is no guarantee of emotional intelligence. Yet there is an intimate relationship between knowing and feeling, how we feel is directly related to what we know and think. Creativity is not a purely intellectual process. It is enriched by other capacities and in particular by feelings, intuition, and by a playful imagination. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 test number 21. The importance of experimental learning depends strongly on the nature of the activity. There are high-risk activities in which the agents have to limit their experiments because they could conflict with the normal performance that has to be achieved. Airline pilots or surgeons cannot learn in this way. Similarly, people managing a marshalling yard or regulating the flow of subway train traffic will avoid any type of experiment in the normal course of their work. The error element of their professional trial and error is rarely consequential at least insofar as outcomes can be rapidly assessed and methods adapted. The fact of being able to carry out this type of learning depends on the nature of the risk and the immediacy, or delay, of the effect. By contrast, a teacher can carry out educational experiments and a craftsman can look for new solutions to a particular problem during the production process. Thus, Explicitly cognitive learning consists of a series of planned but weakly controlled experiments. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 test number 22. Blocking can occur in diverse situations. Engaged in casual conversation, you block on a word in the middle of a sentence. Stage actors fear those relatively rare but embarrassing moments in a scene when they block on their lines. And students are afraid of the awful realization that they have blocked on an exam answer they studied diligently, and might even recall spontaneously after finishing the test. But blocking occurs most often with people's names. 
In surveys that probe different types of memory failures in everyday life, blocking on the names of familiar people invariably emerges at or near the top of the list. Name blocking is especially troublesome for older adults. The single biggest complaint of cognitive difficulties by adults past age 50, by far, involves problems remembering the names of familiar people. 50. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 test number 23. A date or time by which the goal is to be accomplished should be specified. The presence or absence of a deadline is a critical attribute of any goal-setting exercise. Deadlines stimulate action, and the closer the deadline, the more motivation to act. The absence of a deadline makes the urgency of the goal indefinite and hence less motivating. For example, there are a disproportionately large number of plays during the last few minutes of a football game because the team that is behind faces a deadline for scoring more points or losing the game. Similar increases in activity occur toward the end of the trading period each day on the New York Stock Exchange. Think of your own behavior when a test date is rapidly approaching, and you begin to increase your preparation activities. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 Test No 2425. When you are busy creating a new habit, there is a pitfall you should know about, because if you don't, you will fail again and again and again. Let me illustrate it with an example. Suppose you want to learn a new move in tennis. In the beginning, will you get better or worse results with your new move? You will get worse results of course. So the result curve will go down and only after a certain amount of time will it become level and then your results may improve beyond your old habit. Okay. Now back to the starting point. The new move, will it cost more or less energy than the old move? It will cost more of course, it being a new move. After a while you get used to it, it becomes a habit, and it will cost less energy. So now let's look at the area between the downward curve of the results and the upward curve of the energy. Suppose you are at point X. X. You have been busy with the new habit for a while. The results are getting worse all the time. You have to put more energy into it than before. What is your conclusion? MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. Light, 2022, P24 test no 2628. When Linda Burdish was 28, her doctors discovered she had an enormous brain tumor. Linda Burdish 28. They told her that her chances of surviving an operation were about 2%. 2%. They chose to wait six months. Six. She knew she had great artistry in her. So during those six months she wrote and drew eagerly. Six. All of her poetry was published. All of her pictures, except one piece, were shown and sold. At the end of six months, she had the operation. 6. The night before the operation, in case of her death, she wrote a will in which she donated all of her body parts to those in need. Her operation was fatal. Her eyes went to an eye bank in Bethesda, Maryland, and to a recipient in South Carolina. Maryland Bethesda, South Carolina. A young man, age 28, went from darkness to sight. 28. He wrote a thank you letter to the eye bank. Furthermore, he wanted to thank the parents of the donor. He was given the name of the British family and flew to see them on Staten Island. British Staten Island. He arrived unannounced. After he made his introduction, Mrs. British embraced him. British. She said, young man, if you've got nowhere to go, my husband and I would love for you to spend your weekend with us. Dot. He stayed and as he was looking around Linda's room, he saw that she'd read Plato. Linda. He'd read Plato in Braille. She'd read Hegel. He'd read Hegel in Braille. The next morning Mrs. Burdish was looking at him and said, You know, I'm sure I've seen you somewhere before, but I don't know where. Burdish, dot. 
All of a sudden she remembered. She ran upstairs and pulled out the last picture Linda had drawn. Linda. It was a portrait of her ideal man. The picture was virtually identical to this young man who had received Linda's eyes.